Hey guys, so now that we've talked about inclined planes and we've talked about friction, we're going to put it all together and we're going to have problems where objects are going to be sliding up and down a, a plane that will have friction, okay? So let's, let's check it out. Um, there's really nothing special here other than putting those two ideas together, so we're going to start um, with an example right away. We have a five kilogram object here, so the mass is five. It is released from rest, so the initial velocity is zero, from a ramp that makes an angle of 53 degrees with the horizontal. So let me draw this over here. Here's a ramp, it makes 53 degrees at the horizontal, so theta equals 53. We want the angle always to be with the horizontal, so that's good. The coefficients of friction are 0.4 and 0.6. Remember, 0.4 is my kinetic, always the smaller one when you're given to, and 0.6 is the static. Okay, so let's put the five kilogram block in here. Um, the first question asks us to draw the free body diagram. So let's do that. Let's draw the free body diagram and calculate all the forces. Free body diagram FBD. Okay, so you remember how this works. I have mg pulling down. I have, this is mgx, down the plane always, mgy into the plane always, normal, opposite to mgy always, okay? Now, which way would friction go? Well, friction is always going to be, in this case, it's a block, so we can only have kinetic friction, rubbing friction, because it's going to be sliding. Um, it's going to oppose motion. If there was no friction, this box would fall. Because there is friction, therefore, the box, uh, the friction is going to be opposite to that motion, okay? So one of the ways to uh, identify the direction of friction is which way would it move without friction, uh, and then you know that it then the friction has to be going in the opposite direction. In this situation here, where you release a block, friction is always going to be up the plane. Okay. Now the only thing is that we don't know which type of friction we have, but I'll talk about that um, shortly. Let's draw a free body diagram here. Remember, what we do is this is our y-axis, the new y-axis, and this is the new x-axis. This here is not a free body, free body diagram, technically, because free body diagrams have to be just dots without the plane um, and without all the other stuff here, so just a dot with forces on it. So, But I like to draw it here first as a sketch, um, and then just basically transport it over here. I'm going to put my axes first here. Here's the Y, which if I have this here, it's easier to just kind of follow. And here's the X axis right here. I'm going to say that this is the positive y-axis. The positive y-axis is always in the direction of the normal force. And the positive x-axis depends on however you want to decide, uh, determine what the direction of positive is. In this case, this block is going to slide down this way. So I'm just going to choose that this is the positive x-axis. Now that I've uh, drawn my dot and I drew my axis and I picked the directions of positive, I can put the forces here. Um, mg is straight down, mgx is obviously along the x-axis, mgy is along the y-axis. You can draw all three of them, or if you wanted to, you could have drawn, drawn just those two, depends on what your professor's uh, preference is. I think this is the safest version because it's got all, everything there. Uh, normal is going to go up against, uh, in the direction of the y-axis, and friction is going to be going this way, all right? This is a complete free body diagram, so that would have given you full credit if you were asked to draw one of those. I want to calculate all the forces. Let's do that real quick. So mg is simply mass times gravity, so mass 5, gravity I'm going to use 10, so it's faster, and this is going to be 50. mgx, remember mgx, if the angle is down here, mgx is always going to be mg cosine of theta, mg, I'm sorry, mg sine of theta. Remember, x goes with cosine, but then on the inclined plane, it's the opposite. It's backwards. x goes with sine just for the incline. mg is 50, and then sine of 53. And if you do this, I have it here. It's 30. I'm sorry, this is 40, actually. Yeah, this is 40. And then mgy is mg cosine of 53, and that is a 30. Cool? So that's, the, that's those forces. Um, there are no other forces on the y-axis. 
Therefore, normal and MGY have to be the same, so normal is 30 as well. Okay, we got all these forces, and now we have to calculate the friction, frictional force. How much friction is there? The problem is at this point, you don't know whether the object is moving or not. You don't know if MGX is strong enough to overcome the frictional force. Because of that, you don't know if you have static friction or kinetic friction. So what do we do? We test it. We have to calculate both and see whether or not it's going to move. So let's calculate both frictions. I'm going to do it over here. Friction static is mu static normal. Mu static is 0.6. And normal is, uh, we have normal here is 30. So this force here is 18 newtons. Okay. So check this out, MGX, MGX is 40, friction st um, static is 18. So this means that this block will overcome static friction and it will move, okay? So I can say here, since MGX is greater than friction static max, because this is a 40 and this is an 18, the object will move, the object moves, object or block moves. Uh, more specifically, it accelerates, so the acceleration is not zero. Uh, it breaks static friction, which means that, which means that we're actually going to be going up against kinetic friction. So now I know for sure that the friction I have is kinetic. Let's put a kinetic there. Cool. And I can calculate kinetic friction. Friction kinetic is 0.4 times 30, which is 12 newtons. Okay, so I got a 40 here, I got 12 here, um, and normal, we already said it was 30. Okay, so 40, 30, 12, this here is 30 as well. Cool, um, that's part A, um, and I already answered part B as well. Part B was asking, this was basically us, I guess, doing part B here. Um, part B was asking, will it move? And the answer is yes, the object moves. Why? Um, the reason why it moves is because MGX is greater than the maximum static friction. And part C then asks us to derive an expression for its acceleration and calculate it. So let's derive an expression for the acceleration. Well, this is a force problem. I'm asking for the acceleration. You're gonna do this using F equals MA. The block will accelerate this way. So when I say find me the acceleration, the acceleration is the acceleration in the Y and the X axis, which is along the plane, because the acceleration in the Y axis is zero in all inclined plane problems. So I'm really talking about the X axis. So I'm gonna say that the sum of all forces in the X axis equals MAX, and the forces are um, MGX as a positive and friction kinetic as a negative going against the direction of positive MAX. Now what we're going to do since we're deriving expression and we're not going to just plug in these numbers, we have to expand these as much as possible. MGX will be replaced with MG sine of theta and friction will be replaced with uh, minus mu normal. Okay, um, and then we look at this once again and we realize that we can still expand it. So MGX could be rewritten as something else, so we did. Friction could be rewritten as something else, so we did. Um, MG sine of theta can't be further rewritten, but normal, I can replace normal with something else. Normal is MGY because those are the only two forces in the Y axis in the plane right here, right? And MGY can be further rewritten as MG cosine of theta. Once I get to this point, there's no, no long, uh, nothing else I can do there. So this is going to be simply mg sine of theta minus mu mg cosine of theta equals ma. I don't have to keep rewriting ax because it's just the only acceleration I have. Notice at this point that the masses will cancel. So the final answer, the final expression becomes just g sine of theta minus mu 
g cosine of theta. If you want to make it look even more compact, more simplified, if you want to get fancy, you can factor out the g and say that it's g sine of theta minus mu cosine of theta. Or you could have had the g in both. Um, that's, you know, this is just one step further um, if you remember to do that. Cool? So this is the final expression. And then it says calculate it, right? So calculate is just plug in all the numbers. Gravity is 10. This is sine of, um, sorry, this is sine of theta. Sine of 53 is 0.8 minus mu. Mu is the coefficient of friction, which we have kinetic friction. So it's 0.4, right? Because the type of friction we've identified is actually kinetic. So that's going to be 0.4 times the cosine of 53. If you plug in the cosine of 53 in the calculator, um, you get a 0.6. All right? And if you do this, if you do this, let me just see this real quick, you're going to get... I don't have this here, um, but this is going to be point. 24, so 0.8 minus 24 is going to be 0.56, so the answer is 5.6. Sorry about that, I just hadn't calculated that in advance, but the answer here will be 5.6, roughly 5.6 meters per second squared as the acceleration. Cool? So that's it for this one. Hopefully you got it. Uh, let's keep going.